China has invested $7.2 billion in Malaysia's superport, which will be used for the shipping and transporting of goods between East Asia and Australia. Beijing's investment is one of the largest ever made in an infrastructure project. The port is located on the east coast of peninsular Malaysia and will help facilitate trade with others of Asia, Europe, and North America. It will also allow China to export its goods more easily to other countries in Asia. Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak said this investment would help increase the country's GDP by 1% per year over the next two decades. They say that China is investing in the port to help Malaysia become more self-sufficient and independent from other countries. The goal is to make Malaysia an economic hub for East Asia to benefit from being less dependent on other countries' economies. The project will also help reduce traffic congestion, improve freight efficiency, and create jobs for some 40 million people living in Malaysia by 2035. Malaysia's Port Klang Authority has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with China Harbour Engineering Company to develop the country's first integrated logistics and shipping hub in Port Klang. The project is expected to cost $7.2 billion and will take five years to complete. Work on the project will begin within two months. The facility will include Inkludi, three new berths, a deep water container terminal, modernized port facilities, an overhead highway connecting the port with other parts of the country. The new port will also allow easy access for ships from China and other countries with which Malaysia has signed free trade agreements, such as ASEAN member countries Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar. The investment is part of China's plan to build a series of mega ports around the globe. The Port Klang project will be developed by a joint venture between China's Zhenhua Port Machinery, which has been building infrastructure in Europe and North America for years, and Malaysian state-owned company Tanaga National BHD. Port Klang will have five berths capable of handling 13 million containers annually and is expected to begin operations in 2022. The agreement was made during a meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad in Beijing, China. The deal will allow for developing a new port in Penang, located along the Strait of Malacca. The new port will handle 70 million tons of cargo per year and help ease congestion at its current location. It's unclear how much of this investment will come from Chinese investors and how much from local banks. Malaysia's new prime minister and the future of Chinese investment. How will a new prime minister affect Chinese investment in Malaysia? On August 20, 2021, Ismail Sabri Yaakob became Malaysia's new top state leader, covering two years of political emergencies. Malaysia's top dog was chosen, Ismail, following the abdication of the past head of the state, Mahidin Yassin, because he misused the country's coronavirus reaction. Mahidin accepted office after his ancestor, Mahathir Mohamad, surrendered and walked 2020 because of party and fighting. As a returning competitor in the 2018 political race, Mahathir drove a resistance alliance to drive without precedent in Malaysian history, beating occupant head of the state Najib Raz. Each head of the state before 2018 had a place with the Unified Malays Public Association ideological group, implying that Ismail's rising imprints UMNO's revisitation of force. These inter-party elements in Malaysia have capably formed examples of Chinese ventures. In the number one spot up to the 2018 political race, Mahathir and his alliance of resistance groups utilized the East Coast Rail Connection, a rail line developed under the protection of China's Belt and Street Drive, as a critical mission issue. Vajib drove the exchanges on ECRL, and introduced it as financial aid for Malaysia. Bahathir, then again, investigated ECRL's Chinese funding. Australian public college research individual Dr. Amrita Malhai proposes that Mahathir's alliance utilized ECRL to re-examine the China danger away from the country's ethnic Chinese minority close to the dangers that China's impact postured for Malaysia's power. Pre-political decision worries over public sway were likewise begun in disclosures over the one Malaysia improvement Burr had monetary outrage binds Najib and UMNO to a joint perplexed sovereign abundance store upheld by China. After winning the 2018 political race, Mahathir's organization stopped ECRL's development and captured Najib for 1MDB-related debasement. In these examinations, Najib's previous exceptional official asserted that Chinese government authorities were ready to trade bailouts for 1MDB obligations for development contracts, including ECRL. New top state leaders Ismail and UMNO will probably help ECRL, and keep advancing high-profile Chinese interests in Malaysia. In 2017, Ismail discredited Mahathir's cases that ECRL and other bribe projects were auctioning off the country. In 2018, he guaranteed that Mahathir's alliance was rebuffing ECRL's laborers by dropping ECRL to revise a premium cost. 
the undertaking's proposed way in 2016, which slices through UMNO and its unified gatherings electorates on the Malaysian Peninsula's east coast, firmly corresponded with votes in favor of UMNO's alliance in the 2018 political race ECRL will remain a controversial policy-driven issue as Ismail seems to keep promoting the task's financial advantages to a somewhat immature district to acquire support from his ethnic Malay base. Not simply project workers, Chinese state-possessed engineers have arisen as central members of Malaysian governmental issues. China Correspondence's Development Organization, the state-possessed organization contracted to build ECRL, sent delegates to Malaysia in 2018 as a strain for Najib to call for a political decision expanded. At one of these gatherings, 400's VP expressed that the organization ought to explain governmental issues in the political ventures and underline the need to construct homegrown help for the rail line. What's more, after Najib called the political race, China's representative to Malaysia crusaded with individuals from UMNO's alliance. Chinese organization's reaction to political strife in Malaysia is only one illustration of how belt and street speculations reshape homegrown legislative issues around the world. From Ghana to Sri Lanka, China International Concerns College teacher Wen Wan Nai noticed how Chinese government banks and services offer monetary and political help for Chinese state-possessed organizations to collaborate with unfamiliar legislatures and firms on massive foundation projects. Past unambiguous tasks and state-to-state -state cooperations like gatherings between pioneers give channels to Chinese political pioneers to help the eminence of China accommodating organizations and groups abroad. Popular governments with unsteady administration might be especially defenseless to the impact of Chinese foundation speculation on homegrown legislative issues. College of Denver teacher Alvin Kamba contends that Chinese firms and state pioneers favor pioneers who hold authentic power and are careful about confronting power intrigues that might reject or look to update venture project terms. Nonetheless, changes in authority might give clean canvases to Chinese state-claimed undertakings to haggle better terms as new pioneers try to convey early homegrown political successes. In Malaysia, Mahathir and Mahidin's organizations revised ECRL soon after coming into office. Mahathir's organization cut the ECRL's expense by generally $16 billion in return for 400 continuing development in April 2019, while Mahidin's organization acknowledged an increment of more than $12 billion in costs for an extended course in April 2021. Whether Chinese pioneers favor the dependability of incumbency, they will exploit new pioneers' homegrown political situating to support proceeded with interest in the long haul. Ismail's political climb and UMNO's revisitation of force in Malaysia propose that Chinese entertainers might try to take advantage of homegrown political divisions to expand monetary gifts. Chinese state-claimed organizations' acknowledgement of homegrown governmental issues' impact on foundation undertakings' reasonability will stay pertinent as ECRL and different ventures proceed with development in the approach to the following Malaysian political decision book for 2023. Ismail will probably shield UMNO's connections to China and publicize the monetary advantages of ECRL and other bribe projects in his bid for reappointment, similar to Najib in 2018. As Malaysia uncovers, Chinese speculation projects are progressively becoming convenient issues in Southeast Asia and worldwide. How invest $7.2 billion in Malaysia's Supersport China has invested more than $7.2 billion in Malaysia's Superport, which will expand shipping and logistics. The port is located in Port Klang, on the west coast of Peninsular Malaysia. The investment will create a new port facility called Port Klang South Terminal, and a maintenance facility for ships at the existing Port Klang North Terminal. The project is expected to be completed by 2023. China and Malaysia signed a deal today that will see China invest $7.2 billion into Malaysian superports, which will be used to build new shipping and cargo handling facilities. The two countries have been working together on this deal for four years, and it was finalized after several months of negotiations. The agreement is meant to help Malaysia's economy by increasing its competitiveness in the shipping industry. This will allow it to become more competitive in exporting goods to other countries and make it easier for businesses from both countries to trade. This investment is part of a more significant effort by China to increase trade within Southeast Asia, which includes several other agreements, such as those involving Thailand, Myanmar, and Vietnam. China hopes these agreements will help it become more economically stable, which could lead them to invest more money in its infrastructure projects worldwide. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. That's the end for this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.